frontier identification. What did you say? I'll tighten those restraints. Scavenger scum. We don't need a DM identification. I will remove these restraints and get so with the door open. Wives and sweethearts, may they never meet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, may they never meet. Cheers. Uh, that's good. Although, our wives have been talking, Dave, over Facebook. Have they? They have. Oh, that's good. Is it? No good can come of that. <laughs> I mean, better better to maintain good good line of intelligence from that standpoint, so that when we're doing this, there's we're not we're not like hiding in corners and stuff like that. That is true. So, like, oh hey, there's good flow of communication, and like yeah, the guys are recording right now. Yada yada yada. It's all good. It's all good. All My right. wife just trusts me implicitly. Yeah, oh, well, a foolhardy enterprise. <laughs> it's only been three years. <laughs> Exactly. I knew that's the response to that. Oh, uh, young, younglings. Yeah. <laughs> so, hello, everyone. Welcome to All Things Star Wars, the greatest Star Wars podcast in the galaxy. I'm Mr. Jason Roskam. With me here is the Han Solo to my Chewbacca, Dave Martin. Hello, Dave. Hello, Jason. How are you? I'm good. Good. That's great. <laughs> I, I had a question. Yes. So, you refer to yourself as Mr. Roskam. I do. And I'm just Dave. Right. Why? Why are you Mr. Roskin? Do you, well, I mean, have I never told you the history of that no, moniker? Never. Well, Bob might know this. Back when he and I were playing Magic the Gathering at a local card store here in New Jersey, you know, I was one of the oldest guys there playing because I'm, uh. back then I was in my mid-30s, 35, 36, and uh, everybody else was – well, yeah, everybody else was 20s, so they would kind of jokingly refer to me as Mr. Roskam. So my first podcast, Higher Standards, was a Magic the Gathering podcast. So I'm like, well, fuck it, I'll roll with this. So I'm Mr. Roskam because I'm kind of the older guy in that crowd. And it just sort of stuck with me. No, oh, that's good. I mean, if you have a nickname or something that you'd like to I use. I don't. I'm fine with Dave. It's just it's they, somebody actually asked me about it. It's like, well, what, what's with the Mr. Roskam? And you're, you're, you're just Dave. Yeah. So I was like, all right. Even though I'm older than you, we'll still go with it. That is true. But it's yeah, fine. no, it just happened to be because of the, the younger crowd I was running with for a while. That's good. You know, somebody's got to be the gray hair leading those, leading those younglings. The gray hair I do have. <laughs> Whenever it grows in, I do have it. So and speaking of younglings. <laughs> Hello. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, the Lando to our Han and Chewie is here with us once again for another episode. Bob, hello. Colt 45. <laughs> it's a dynamite taste. It's <laughs> all I can think of about Billy D. Williams. Every when he was in the after, when they had the the vignette with Lando in the aftermath books, all I could think of because they talk about the slug thrower pistol he's got. Uh-huh. So all I can think of is Billy D. Williams in like army fatigues because he's reinvading Cloud City. With a revolver in one hand, like a thirty-eight special in one hand, and a bottle of Colt forty-five in the Spoiler other. Spoiler alert! <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, we're gonna we're gonna spoil a lot of stuff. This and, episode. and where is Lando in the new trilogy? He invades Cloud City, takes that back. So we know that that happens. Like he, he's back in but, Cloud City. I mean, what they, they didn't want to pay Billy D. Williams to to come back, or well, hey, he was at Celebration this year. Yeah, so, so he, I he looked like he was out of it too. Did you notice? Oh, that? dude, he was. He had. He had the sunglasses on, and he was just like sitting there, just like I mean, staring at he his was, face. He was, he was a cool guy. He was a cool, cool guy. You, you, know? you don't party that hard for that long, Jason, and not have some after effects. That, I mean, that's valid. So, <laughs> I was going to make a Colt 45 malt liquor reference again, but I, just, I feel like I shouldn't do that uh, for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> so in this episode, we're going to get into the evolution of the troopers, starting from clones all the way to stormtroopers and beyond. But before we get into that, first, let's talk about our week in Star Wars. Have you guys been doing anything Star Wars related that's not part of the podcast, books, video games, uh, rewatching movies or whatnot? Uh, Dave, how about you? Well, uh, you start with me. I don't know. I, l- listen, researching for this podcast is my life. Oh, okay. and I, that's that is everything. Everything I do is involving Star Wars, Jason. Well, I understand. Now, I'm not that. thinking about retirement from the military and doing all these other things. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm thinking solely about Star Wars. You can you can put the Wikipedia page down now, Dave. Oh uh, no, uh, it is Wikipedia. <laughs> uh, research. Uh, I will say that I I haven't finished Thrawn yet, and the reason I haven't finished Thrawn is that's because so I'm reading Guardians of the Wills 
Uh, oh, so I, yeah. I I saw that and I'm just wandering through Barnes and Noble. I think I mentioned it before on one of the other episodes, but I saw it on the shelf and I'm like, oh, you know what? Let me go on Amazon and buy that. That's canon, right? It is canon. Yeah, okay. It's it's not bad. It's not like oh, you absolutely have to read this. You know, it's it's okay. I haven't really finished it. It's it's not riveting to me that I really need to be constantly looking at it. Now, um, does it talk about the two characters, Baze and um, Cheer yes, It? Okay, yes. so it's a is it like centered around those two? Yes, oh, okay. it's, cen- gotcha. it's centered around those two. It's not like going into this deep philosophical like oh where did it come from? It really doesn't go be- that far back at all. Okay, it has some allusions to what things were like before the Empire came. Okay, uh, but it's mostly staying in the present as we know it for Rogue One purposes. So sure. uh, no huge revelation. It's just a little bit build up for the characters, you know, the interaction between Baze and, uh, and sure it's, it's not bad. It just hasn't been so riveting that I, I like, I, I can't put this down. Yeah. And it's kind of, unfortunately with, with just kind of reading in general where I'm doing so much other stuff like that I need to be doing, like I said, prepping for retirement and shit like that. It's kind of I'm like, all right, I'm trying to wind down a little bit and I'll read a little bit, put it down and go to bed. So now like the aftermath books, when I picked it up, it got to a point where I was like, I'm reading this until I can't, st- I, I'm, yep. I'm unconscious. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll, I'll pick it up and read it again until it's done. Yeah. That's why we read things so fast, Jason. <sighs> I'm just not a big reader. I'm sorry. Has been proven. Yeah. Time, and time again. But anyway, that's it. That's, I, I just been reading some stuff. Okay. Now is that, that's kind of a young adult novel. Is that right? Yeah. It's not, it's, it's not. Like, even the book is smaller. Like, it's about, like, see my hands, everyone. <laughs> it's, it's about yay big. <laughs> the book's kind of small. It, but it's not, it's not like I'm reading Are You My Mother or something. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> right. yeah, it, I'm, it's, I'm trying to you think of some. You do it in a box. Like, <laughs> you do it with a fox. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe we went back too far. All right. Uh, uh, you know, like a, a Hardy Boys book. Is right. That, do kids still read those? Uh, yeah. No. Kids no, they don't. They don't. Read anymore. Well, that is true too. I don't know. My kids are in college. So they watch they YouTube. They have to read. They're forced to it. Well, they're like, oh, oh, do do I want to know about this book? I'll just go on YouTube and they'll tell me what happened in this book. Oh, that be an interesting sidebar because my daughter showed me one of the things for one of the books she had to read. This this dude on YouTube that like you know basically told the entire premise of the book, wow. but it was like it, it it's. <laughs> I, God damn it. I wish I could remember the name. It was fucking hilarious, man. I yeah. wish they had that shit when I was going to school because it was like, oh, oh I'm right. going to YouTube oh, this guy yeah. and he's going to break down fucking, uh, um, you know, the Odyssey. And right. it's going to be oh, it's going to be fucking hilarious. And he's going you know, it's going to be done in like 15 minutes. And then like she she'll she did that and she went in and fucking aces this test just based solely on that. It's like, incredible. Holy shit. Uh, I, I'm not going to say the name of the book or the name of the class, just in case that one of those teachers is listening. Uh, you know, wait for my daughter to, uh, you know, escape Alcatraz and, and move on to college before that happens. But, yeah, All right, fair enough. Well, I'll go back and listen to the show like two years from now, and then you can. Yeah, exactly. Tell me what it was. So, uh, Bob, I know you've been doing a lot of reading lately. Some. Yeah. I read. So I read all of the aftermath novels, the trilogy. I had the good fortune, though, to be fair, to be away on vacation for five days. Yeah. So I did have time, although I was at Disney, so I was running around most of that time. So very much as Dave sort of alluded to, I picked the books up and just couldn't put them down. It was like, oh, we have nothing else to do. I'll be reading this. Or I I downloaded it. So I, re- I read a lot of books off my iPad now because it's I travel a lot. So I just throw my iPad in my bag and yeah. I've got all the books that I want. So I downloaded it to my phone, the, oh, wow. the app in your phone to read, mm-hmm. which I don't normally do, but we would be in lines for 20 minutes and, you know, yeah. my wife's just kind of like, whatever, looking on her phone. I mean, look, we've been married for three years. Do we still have stuff to talk about? But, you know, 20 minutes in line, you're like, what the fuck? Happened? So oh, I'd that's... be like, flip, 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 flip. You know, you just yeah. read it on your phone. That's actually a great idea now that, now that you mentioned it. It was a great way to yeah. kill time. Yeah, because if you're going to be waiting in lines for 20 yeah. minutes or an hour for some rides. I mean, we had fast pass for a lot of the rides, but there were some where you just, you know, or I'm not a roller coaster guy. My wife is, so she'll Your go. wife's a roller coaster guy? Uh, no, she's actually a roller coaster girl. <laughs> okay. And, you know, <laughs> I think. I mean, technically, I don't have kids yet. I can't prove that I know. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Like, there's no actual living proof that, anyway. Um, we'll just move on. <laughs> anyway, but, uh, you know, she would go on roller coasters and I would just wait for her to get off. So I'd be, you know, reading the book. There's Did- a whole nother interesting conversation to have about like, cause I have this iPad that I have right here mm-hmm. in front of me. Like I, I got this for father's day a few years back solely for reading. Mm-hmm. Cause it was, you know, I trudge around these hard book, 
hardcover books because I like the hardcover. I do too. I and love them. I like, I, all right, let me drift away from that and download the stuff. Like a lot of the, a lot of the expanded universe stuff, like towards the end, I downloaded most of it. Mm-hmm. I have issues reading from the screen. Like it got to, it got to a point where I just was like, I would read less because I was reading off a screen. So I kind of went right. back to the books. Yeah. I just felt like, especially because I don't travel as much. When, when I was flying a lot back before all the other nonsense happened, it paid to have this thing loaded up with a book. Oh, sure. Like you said, when you're traveling, it's, it's extremely yeah. portable. You know, you, yeah. you know, it fit perfect in my flight suit pocket and boom. Yeah. It's know, great to just go. have something to pull out of your pocket and yeah, turn exactly. on and just continue where you were. Yeah. But I, I drifted away from that specifically because I was like, I'm not, you know, I had a nook back in the day. And I the nooks, a yeah, the nooks were like that, you know, reading it from like the, the fake paper or whatever they called it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Depending on Kindle calls it something else, but mm. those, it was actually a little bit more manageable. It was easier on the eyes. It, it certainly was. Yeah. Anyway, that being said, I got, I'm at a point now where I just enjoy, like we had a whole conversation about how much Tarkin costs in hardcover, you know, <laughs> like, like I just like, I just like having the books. It's like having, no. like, look at my impressive library of no, these no, leather I mean, bound books. <laughs> I, I read, I read religiously a lot of the Forgotten Realms and Dragonlance novels for like, for the D and D era of stuff. And oh, yeah. I, I had the very, the softback, cause that's what a lot of them started out coming in out as, you know, the small softback novels. I've got shelves of those things and I love having them. Yeah. yeah. And I've reread some of them and, and I love the hardcover books, but f- just for my life now, I had to be realistic. I stopped reading for a while and I got really upset about it because it did affect, I noticed my vocabulary being able to get ideas across seemed harder for some odd reason. And so I, I really thought, why, why don't I read anymore? Why, you know, what is it? I enjoy it. So it's not that I don't want to do it. Mm-hmm. And I realized I travel a lot. And when it's like you're trying to pack everything into one suitcase and you know you have to schlep the other bag on your back, you're yep. like, I'm not taking this hardcover. I'm not even going to have time to, to make a dent in this on this trip. But on an iPad, you're just like, hmm. well, I don't have time, but I do have 10 minutes. Yeah, you can read yeah, a few pages you know, at a time. Than, and than playing Candy Crush or some other yep. nonsense. I yeah. No book. Which, so really, the, the moral of this story, Jason, is reading is fundamental, and you should do more of it. <laughs> you should. Oh, my God. Okay. Because of your vocabulary. Okay. You, the, you, the more you know. Now, you understand <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that I had to work all weekend last weekend. Uh, yeah, so, right. you know, unlike the people where – you work or we get whatever <laughs> i know where you work you don't work on the weekends anymore well i do and i do recall seeing you i, I do recall being there and us having a conversation uh th- this last weekend that we were working so okay. I, I was there motherfucker all right so you this can't is... use that shit on me do you know what this is I, 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 it's the yes. world's smallest violin playing My Heart Bleeds for You. <laughs> Again, this, this is for the video audience, for everybody who's watching us on video oh, they now. Know what's in, they know it's <laughs> Now we're all giving them the finger. You know, the finger goose. Man, it, 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 this has just been like two weeks of picking on Jason. I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> Keeping up relations? <laughs> That's Yes. <laughs> all right. So the only big thing that I've done in Star Wars this week besides getting ready for the show is, Dave, I sent you a picture of this already. But, Bob, I don't know if you've seen this yet. But I just bought this guy a couple of days ago. The lightsaber toolkit. I, I was at GameStop with my son. You know and that those are not going to last past the first use. Right? Like, you know what? Don't even take them out of the package, honestly, because yeah, like, like, that's what you're, you're going to want to look. Look, it's in a gloved like Darth Vader hand. Yeah. <laughs> look at that shit. Yeah, it's uh, it's three screwdrivers, a flathead, uh, Phillips, and something. Another else. flathead, and then another flathead, and the the handles of these screwdrivers are three different lightsabers. One's the the original Luke lightsaber that Ray mm-hmm. ended up in possession with, and I'm assuming the other two are Luke and Vader's lightsaber. This one but, looks like, a, like Yoda's, actually. Yeah, uh, the smaller okay. one. But, yeah, I bought that. It was on clearance at GameStop. Um, I, the second I saw it, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have to own this. I just, and, I just and, uh, love the fact that when they were, they were taking pictures for the back of this thing, they had to put, like, okay, here, we're going to put this big leather... Uh, Darth Vader glove on your hand. Now model model this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll take some pictures and put them up on our Instagram account. Yeah, there you go. Think geek. <laughs> but yeah, clever. I had a, a conversation with the cashier and she was saying, oh yeah, when we first got these, they were 30 bucks and nobody was buying them. But as soon as we put them on clearance, they all went away. 30 fucking dollars for three screwdrivers that you couldn't even possibly use to actually do anything with? Wow. Yeah. But... It's a novelty thing. Uh, yeah. But at seven dollars, I was $7, like, Yeah, it's I'll, worth I'll buy that. Hanging it on the wall for sure. Yep. So Very anyway, <laughs> that's pretty much all I've been doing this last week in Star Wars. Screwing off. 
So something pretty important is going on this week. You don't say. Yeah, I do say. And I'm sure you're going to hear this from a million different other websites and podcasts and YouTube channels. But this week is the 40th anniversary of the release of the original Star Wars, Episode 4, A New Hope. How come wouldn't it be Episode 1? Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> We're not even going to go down that aisle. I mean, because it's Bob. Bob, does this rag smell like ether? <laughs> Listen, uh, well, I will say this, that there's probably – all right, it's the 40th anniversary. Yeah. All of us diehards have, are intimately aware and have anticipation of something that's going to happen hopefully in our Star Wars world yeah. you know, this week mm-hmm. because of the 40th anniversary. They, there's got to be a release. Hopefully there's a trailer or something. Something. Some sort of announcement. Please. Something, Kathleen. Something. But – that being said, I think that while this is a big day for us, mm-hmm. like it's not May the 4th is kind of like it's kind of like St. Patrick's Day right. because it's for all the people that want to be like be part of something, you know, like, oh, we're all going to pretend to be Irish and like drink green beer and fucking goof off <laughs> and get stuck at a goddamn sobriety checkpoint because you're fucking amateurs. Yeah. You know, that's that's like that was May the 4th. So I think most of the like. The, the people that aren't really Star Wars fans, they got wrapped up in May the 4th. They don't even realize what's going on. This right. is for us. The, May, the 40th anniversary stuff, that's for us. That's for the hardcore people, I think. Sure. So uh, those of us that are really anti- – we're anticipating something big. Um, I guess the question for you is what are you going to do to celebrate? I'll probably watch the original movie. I'll probably gather the family around. We'll – Put on the uh, <laughs> the version of Star Wars that I've told you about before, the D specialized edition right. that we've acquired, and uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll probably watch that on May twenty fifth, the night of the fortieth anniversary. Yep. How about you, Bob? How are you going to celebrate? Um, I, I've popped out. You know, the I have VHS copies of the original, and I yep. do have a VHS player, so. Damn right. um, I actually did dust them off this morning when I was prepping for this, and you know, I'm probably going to throw them in. I will probably try over the next you know 10 12 days to watch all the movies yeah just you know the original trilogy right the original i'll probably watch the first three too and i'll probably do rogue one it depends i now see now you guys have like i've always known of the machete order but not the actual order of it but now that you've mentioned it now i have to like but really, it doesn't matter, right? Because I already know that Darth Vader is Luke's father. So really, I could just watch it. <laughs> no. Oh, spoiler alert. Sorry for anybody that he just ruined that for. <sighs> Shut up. <laughs> I'm not going on another rant. I did. I spent a good part of that episode, you know, ranting on the machete order. So Now, now one thing that we didn't get into. Can Maybe I just I will do the machete order? Yeah, no, you should. Got... Yeah. Yeah. I'll do you it. You try it. Right. Dick bags. <laughs> When Episode 7, Force Awakens, came out, there is a theater somewhere here in Jersey that does this whenever a big release like this happens. They do it with the Marvel movies, and they did it with Star Wars. They play every movie Mm -hmm. from start to finish leading up to the release of the new movie, right? Right. So with Marvel, when they did – when the first Avengers movie came out, they did like the first Iron Man, the first Hulk, the first Captain America, first Thor, and they did a marathon of those leading up to that. Would you ever do that for Star Wars? Like for episode eight or nine, if that theater here in Jersey is like, we're going to play every Star Wars movie up to episode nine, then at midnight, episode nine, and – I, you know, you we, I think that. we talked about this in, uh, in, you know, our, uh, like episode one or two for mm-hmm. this podcast when we're like, I'm too old for that shit. <laughs> Honestly, I'd love to do it. Like, I would, I, I would do it for episode nine. Would you? Yeah. You do it like be, to, to cap it off and be like, you want to know what? When episode nine came out, this is what I did. Like, I could see doing it for that. But, mm. oh, man. But like, I, for episode eight, like, we still got one more. What you that is true. Yeah. yeah so, what are you going to do the marathon again for yeah. episode nine? Well, that's the thing. I maybe, maybe for episode nine, maybe like depending on let's let's say maybe they tee up something for episode eight, and it's just like, oh my god, this is like the culmination of like the end of the Skywalkers or something like that. Like we're really we're like kind of forecasting some shit like that, where it's just like I would, I would just absolutely be you know sploosh worthy to freaking <laughs> go and just be able to uh, like absorb everything at once and just kind of and kind of jump into it. Yeah, maybe. I, I, People ask me about that with episode seven because they did do that. 
when yeah. episode seven came out. Yeah, I know like, somebody who did that. Yeah, and it was like, do you, why, you know, why didn't you do that? You're such a huge Star Wars fan. Why didn't you do that? It's like, because I'm, I'm fucking old. Man. <laughs> I, like, yeah. There was a point where I was just like, I no, I, I'll, I'll st- I would have stood in line to get tickets to make sure that I got in and be one of the first people to see this movie. Because mm. we did. We saw it on a Thursday Thursday night. Yep. It was like a 10 o'clock showing or something like that. Mm-hmm. And we weren't, the, we didn't see the first showing because there was a showing in front of us. I think it was 7 o'clock. Yeah. You know. But we got in there, we saw the IMAX version, and it was like, yeah, okay. I'm, I was, I had full anticipation to, to do it. If I had been sitting in the theater for fucking that long and just been like, oh, fucking get to the new movie already, right, cause that's what I'm going to be thinking. Yeah. Like, all right, I'm enjoying this theater experience. I've seen all these movies in the theater already. Like, give me, I, I want the new fucking movie. It's only going to make me want it that much more. So I don't know that I, like, it'd be worth sitting there getting fucking bed sores, you know. <laughs> Getting and, and then fi- to finally watch the movie, but like I said, I, it might get to a point we could get full th- froth, and you know, episode nine comes out, just like fuck yeah, let's do it, let's yeah. fucking go, yeah, you because know, it, it may be you, it may be worth it. You know, it would be a fun God. I don't know if we could all do this. You know, it would be really fun or interesting is if you managed to record the room like this room, and we fucking did that here one day, and just oh God. Did them all and and recorded like live streamed the entire everything thing, and then you just take snippets of it and like pieced it together into an episode. We could do that. I mean, I, mean, I got to get oh that mini God. fridge in here. Yeah. I still owe you a mini fridge. Yeah. Uh, and we, and then I mean, how many we, hours are we talking? We, here? You know what we do? Oh God, we rent a porta john. <laughs> we rent a porta john. We park it right there. They're, it's cheap as shit. Like for like, you can do it for a weekend for like a hundred bucks. You can get a porter john here. Well, why don't we just fucking go the full nine and just get depends so we don't even have to get up? Because uh, <laughs> depends and desit in then you know fucking diaper rash. You know, fucking wearing that shit. And I'm not changing you. You know we were in this fucking like. <laughs> What, Bob, what you don't know is Jason and I, we're in a fucking hurricane shelter together. Like, oh, and that's during some of the hur- shit that we saw. During oh, a hurricane? God. Yeah. When we were, we were, you know, it was fucking, Sandy. Yeah, yeah. Hurricane oh, Sandy, God. our National Guard shit. And uh, we were down there. Like, Jason got to escape earlier than I did. Yeah. And we, some of the shit that we saw in this fucking place. <laughs> I'm writing a book about it. Yeah. I'll be honest. With you. It's part of my therapy. It's Fun fucking- fact that ties back into Star Wars, though. That's you right. Know, you yes. know what came out that week while we were in the shelter? Clone Wars? No. no. Angry Birds Star Wars. Angry Birds Star Wars. And I actually – I have notes in, in my in my book that um, that said like the only the – only, I, th- I think I made a statement like, you know, the only thing that's going to fucking, you know – the only thing that's made me happy in the past week was the fact that Angry Birds Star Wars came out. Yeah, you know, or, or some words to that effect. Yeah, we had to we had to hike up to a hill, the yeah. top of a hill, to get our cell phones to work. AT&T, and was, we called it AT and T Hill because AT and T was the only one that was working. Dude, oh, it was uh, fucking uh, epic. A story for another time. Yeah. So, anything else on the 40th anniversary? I mean, Dave and I, we were both alive, though we don't really remember much from when the original mm-hmm. was released. But we were, were alive. We were alive. <sighs> And uh so that means what? You get your AARP cards earlier? I don't, I don't Dude, know. I get a shit from AARP all the time. Yeah. I it's, I don't know why. I was I was getting that shit in my 30s. <laughs> they they, they obviously they knew me they knew me very well. <laughs> That's all right. It just means we're going to be kicking the bucket first and then Bob's going to be doing a solo podcast from our tombstones. I can and, just hostile take over this podcast like I've done with every other podcast you've started just. I know. How did that happen? Yeah, I, mean, I don't I'm understand. Really anyway. <laughs> uh did you know, I I took a lot of notes from the, the whole Palpatine takeover. It, hey, you know, he manipulated his way right into the top. Right so. into the top, I, which then begs the question what I'm doing here, but that's all right. You'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> so just, just, I just saw the quote actually, and I think, I, I think it's, it's, it's worthy of saying yeah. that uh, we're in the shelter. And uh, my quote was Angry Birds Star Wars came out today. It's pretty much the closest thing I've had to an erection in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we were living in just a single room with like what ten other guys that we had to. to yeah, sleep in the same well, room, we had so. we had that one. Well, it went in phases, but when we ultimately what we spent the most time in is we had a little a, this separate area, and it was there was about a dozen of us. Yeah, you know, in that in in one room with with cots that were only meant to be slept in for a night, and we spent a fucking you know. I spent 18 days there. So. Yeah, I was there a week less than you. So, yeah, it was a fucking shit show. But, yeah, that that, <laughs> that quote it pretty much sums up the experience. <laughs> but, so, it was, but at least there was Star Wars. Yeah, so happy 40th anniversary, Star Wars. Yeah, on that note. Uh, moving into the heart of the episode, we're talking about the evolution of troopers throughout the course of the Star Wars universe. And 
if we do this chronologically, we have to go all the way back to the old Republic era, right? Which back in the old Republic video game, the MMO that we've talked about briefly on the show, they have the Republic troopers in that game. And the trooper ended up being my main character in that. I don't know if how familiar you guys are with it, but you get to, yeah, you get to pick a class, which you could pick like a Sith warrior with, or a Sith inquisitor or a Sith spy or, you know, a Republic uh, trooper or a Jedi or something else. And I tried like initially when the game first came out, I'm like, I'm going to be a Jedi and I'm going to be a Sith. Right. So I created my Jedi, I created my Sith, played them a little bit. I'm like, yeah, 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 this is fun. But I mean, something's not really clicking. And then I'm like, I'll try a trooper and see what that's like. And that was when the game really took off for me because the trooper, it was so fun. I, I just love the whole concept of them just being the soldier on the front line doing their thing in the trooper armor and everything. And the trooper in the old Republic is the only character I ever got to max level in that game. Huh. And one area I wanted to point to was the hope trailer from the old Republic. And I I'll put a link to it in the, in the show description, but yeah, all you have to do is go onto YouTube and just type in the old Republic and hope. And that's a trailer essentially showcasing the, yeah. the troopers yeah. from uh, the old Republic. And it's a really good trailer. And, you know, they're in the trooper armor that looks very much like the clone or the storm trooper armor. And yeah, that for me, chronologically, that's where the troopers really begin, even though, Old Republic probably isn't canon. That's that's one of those convoluted things because it's o- something officially no, but it's something that's still ongoing, which is weird because the game is still going and it's being done by EA, which has the sole license to make Star Wars games mm-hmm. for Disney. So it, it's interesting. It's it's probably a gray area as to whether or not that stuff is canon. Well, the thing about it is when they wiped what they're calling legends now. Yes, yeah. start which is the old canon. Mm-hmm. And they wipe that. It actually doesn't mean that characters like Revan, for instance, didn't exist. Right. It just means they haven't done anything with them. Then that that character could very well exist, and the storyline may be somewhat different. But I, I mean, a lot of those things may very well happen. I mean, you have to remember part of the reason they did that was a marketing strategy. Now they can go retell half this crap. Yeah. And. It's not as many hoops to jump through when you want to start building new movies. You know, like okay, wait a minute. <laughs> we already have this this giant compressed book of knowledge of stuff that happened. So mm-hmm. now we have to tell these stories in a grander scheme of a story. And it's like, I would love to be at the table where they talked about trying to do that. So <laughs> it's probably some intern was like, why don't you just get rid of all of it? And they're like, get the hell out of here. And then the minute the door closed, you know what? We should probably just get the hell rid of all of it. Yeah. Yeah. And we're actually going to be talking about that in an upcoming episode. Okay. The whole yeah. legends, the old canon versus that, the new canon. That, that's an episode. Yeah, but um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So uh, it's my understanding that they have a single guy who's in charge of maintaining the timeline now, like yes. who's employed yes, by they Disney. Do. They, they interviewed him in the behind the scenes video I saw. Yeah. And, um, uh, down when I was at Disney. Yeah. So he's yeah. he's kind of like in charge of maintaining continuity throughout mm-hmm. all of the, the new expanded universe. Yeah, I've heard him do interviews on other podcasts because like, they'll talk about the comic stuff a lot. Oh, like, yeah, they, yeah. So he'll talk about the things that are going on in the comics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But going from the Old Republic time frame, we don't really see troopers again until – the, the clone troopers come around, right? right? So episode two, Attack of the Clones, is when we're introduced to this concept of the, the clones and the clone troopers. And we're introduced to the whole history where it, it takes them 10 years to fully mature from birth to being able to go out on the battlefield. It, it, it's all explained in episode two uh dave i mean do you have anything to no i just like the way i kind of broke it down especially for my notes is like there was different processes for like for the clones that they deemed you know for the the kaminoans at the time you know and they do they talk about an episode two like okay they're cloning technology you hear the the that that fat fuck in the uh the diner telling obi-wan all about it right so but one of the things that they talk about you know doing some research is like that 10 year process to mature was obviously the most effective because they're like, they're actually able to train them more effectively and, and make them better warriors. Sure. So they were extremely obedient and really, really good at what they were doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was, that was position a, you know, the Django Fett clone that they, 
like somehow materialized into not only the pilots, you know, okay, here's a specialization for basically the same individual, just over that 10 years of training, you had them all doing different things. So in that process was considered the most effective for cloning. Right. And then of course, you know, during an active war, I mean, you have to be able to pump out troops like, right. Yeah. But it's funny. I mean, in, in, in at least the non-canon part, which may very well end up becoming canon again, um, you know, if you look at sort of the evolution from the clone troopers into what eventually becomes stormtroopers, mm-hmm. they don't. The clone troopers very quickly become a minority as they start recruiting humans into the army. Sure, like regular, you know, natural born humans, to the point where um, there's some very good stuff written about um, like clone trooper. There's a clone trooper sergeant who had his own book at one point, and he basically was quoted as saying at one point. I wish to God I had clone troopers again. He's one and he's saying, you know, because <laughs> yep. what's coming into the army is total trash right uh-huh. now yeah. because they're recruiting people from the outer rim, basically, you know, people with people who have no direction in life at that point, Jason, and, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, and, and, and he's just, and, and there's a lot of bemoaning of sort of the clone troopers becoming a minority and these new guys, these natural borns coming in who my, my term, not the term used in the book. Right. Um, so the sort of the, the imperial the the flux between the republic to the imperial army sort of sees this downtick in the quality mm. which then might explain why once you get to the imperial army they can't hit a freaking thing right and you know so, i was i was going to mention that too but cuz clone troopers can hit a freaking thing they hit all the jedi yeah. all at once apparently <laughs> yeah I, in yeah. fact i made that in my notes you know <laughs> like, yeah, the, close quarters battle there <laughs> yeah the clone, clone troopers killed all the jedi but fucking stormtroopers can't hit a Goddamn yeah, fucking well, anything. Jason, like you, you speak on quite frequently. It's one of those where, um, you know, how effective were those Jedi anyway? I mean, they, they well, yeah, yeah, that's true. They 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 talked a big game, and they didn't really do a whole lot, from what we're to believe. Right. So, so if you if you go on Wikipedia and you know start looking up, you know, talking about the the, the troopers, and there's also there was another clone process that was brought into place. Mm. You know, you had the Kaminoan process, and they had a process called the Arcanian process, which basically took it was they they were cloning. Um, it wasn't just cloning like the Jango Fett clone. It had different varieties of it. Like so, it was like all right, these this particular uh, person. It's like okay, we're gonna clone this person for their leadership ability, and then we're gonna clone this person for this. Right. And it was a one year process. Which wasn't nearly as effective. Now you got troops on a battlefield a lot quicker, but they were also like they just weren't as they weren't as good. <laughs> I can only see like, uh, it, I have this I have this Galaxy Quest like vision in my head where it's just like one one clone just like just not Galaxy the Galaxy Quest stuff popped in my head, but the um uh the Family Guy uh, where we have yeah. Bitch Stewie, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you make Bitch Stewie, and he's just like just not quite. Just not quite right, you know. It's like, all right, yeah. Look, he's so obedient and everything else, and it fucking, you know, explodes and his eyes pop out and shit like that, you know. Um, but yeah, it's uh, if you can go on Wikipedia, you know, won't belabor it. But there was another process where, as the Kaminoan clones were dying off, you know, obviously they're in war, so you're going to lose them, yep. and you can't reproduce them at a rate that was effective. Right. There was the Arcanian process, and the um, the main Kaminoan, who's again, I should have wrote this shit down. But uh, the, you, you see her in episode two. Yeah. She actually works with the uh, – I think it was the Genome, uh, the the company that was actually making these other clones. Mm. And she was part of like the, the staff of those to oversee the clone program for that. Oh, okay. So – and it's also like in some of the, the Legends material too is where when they're cloning Jedi or they're cloning Sith and they're trying to uh, you know populate Sith uh, so that you can have more – like like yeah. uh, interaction with that. I mean, the thing to keep in 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 mind with the clone troopers is that um, very early on in the process of creating them, the Sith took over the process. So Sifo Dias is the Jedi that 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 decided that that commissioned the Kaminoans, I guess, to create them. Yeah. But then he dies, and this is like early on in that ten year process, and Darth Tyrannus, who was Palpatine, basically takes over that process. And alters the genome of Django Fett to make them more, you know, susceptible to orders and, you know, more willing to do what they're told to do and, and all that sort of thing. So from really early on, these guys are like the downfall of the Republic. 
I mean, yeah, yeah, the, of the Republic, but they're the ones that bring up the oh, Empire sure. essentially, yeah, right? So, which I mean, I think we can all agree was other than the genocidal leader at its head. It's a big improvement over the way things were going. Oh, sure. Taxes were down. <laughs> law, and order, law and order was kept up. Yeah. You know. And, and it's interesting, too, because I, mean, I just... Really, all the guy did was enforce the laws that are, were already on the books, right? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Well, okay. So you, you mentioned the the whole clones and then the, the time that it takes to bring them up. One thing that I found interesting because I was rewatching episode two recently and the guy that was the, the head of the Caminoans, he mentioned to Obi-Wan that we have 500,000 ready for you with a million more on the way where well, I'm sitting there thinking like, wait a minute, if we're talking about a, a galaxy wide civil war, how far are 1.5 million troops really going to take you when you've got wars going on across multiple worlds you know, I mean, how how far or how long are these guys going to last? Well, you know, that was obviously it didn't matter yeah. for the grand scheme of things. You know, oh, sure. You could, if you're going in and selling it to the Senate, like, hey, I'm only going to need this many bodies mm -hmm. to do whatever it is I need to do. Yeah. Right. And then we're going to we're going to squash this out. And then we're not I don't need more and more and more troops. I'm going to take this number of troops and I'm going to make sure that we're, you know, the the the, the world is is safe again. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're Palpatine and you're standing up there and you're just slamming <laughs> this into the Senate before you fucking throw it at Yoda, you know. <laughs> so that's all right, here's the number because it was a throwaway army anyway. Sure. Because for for Palpatine, it was this is okay, I need this to happen so that I can like way easier to mass produce droids. So they were always outnumbered. Right. Always outnumbered. Even in that piece of shit that we reviewed last week, mm -hmm. you know, they talk about there's there's so many more battle droids, inept, you know, overly talkative battle droids than than you had clone troopers. But the clone troopers were always prevailing because they had the skill set. They were obviously better trained and weapons, whatever. So Palpatine knew because he's the puppet master for all of this mm -hmm. that he knew that like okay I only need this number but and it got to a point where like okay it's I'm going to need and I, there's got to be an interim you know mm -hmm. we lose this many clone troopers here's the interim what do we do and ultimately you start recruiting people to be the stormtroopers because all right, you need bodies you need bodies in those helmets oh sure so now it, it's interesting that you bring up the whole disposable army thing too because that was a note that I made throughout the course of my research is the fact that Pretty much all iterations of troopers between the clone troopers, the stormtroopers, uh, not so much the stormtroopers for the first order, but they're, they really are just like a faceless army that, well, that, well they're made and they're made to be that way. Right. right exactly. Right. Because, you know, you, you see their corpses laying all over the place throughout the courses of these movies. Right. Well, the, the clone army was a throwaway army completely. Sure. Because not only are they, you know, born in vats or whatever they're being born in for one purpose, right? Mm -hmm. But they also have accelerated aging. Yeah. And so, you know, the, they're not meant to live that long. I mean, they're meant to fight a war. What do you, 10 years maybe at its worst? And then what do you, you know, it solves the problem of what do you do with your veterans? Well, we don't have any. They just yeah. die off and we yeah. don't have to worry about a pension plan. Well, um <laughs> but but you know when you <laughs> I feel like I feel like that affects me directly. <laughs> well, Kylo Ren said like, an army of clones would have probably been more effective. Yeah, God. <laughs> yeah, but I have the accelerated agent thing going right now. Yeah, <laughs> but you I mean, you, I mean, you don't think that? Nah, <laughs> they wouldn't do that. Those anthrax shots are uh, <laughs> nothing to do with it. Yeah. Um, but then once you get into you know. The sort of human clone army, and then the, the, the storm, you know, the dark times, and then the stormtroopers. Um, you know, it's all psychological warfare. I'm not telling you guys anything you don't know. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're supposed to be a faceless horde, like kill one, and there's ten more that are coming out of the transport ship. Right. Well, know? in in most scenarios in real war in the real world, you know, all of these soldiers have a face, whereas the stormtroopers are all in the exact same armor, the exact same helmets. So when they all die and they're all just laying in, in piles of corpses, all you see are just these guys in this armor. So it's it's really like th this faceless army. And I wonder if they did that on purpose, specifically I, to, to, to kind of dehumanize them a I, little bit. That and just to, you know, be a little bit more intimidating. Like, you know, this, you know, if you can't Human, like have some human interaction with this this person or humanoid or whatever, mm -hmm. you know this bipad that's walking around in this white armor that doesn't you can't tell if they're looking at you or not. Yeah. You know you can't like th that's the whole purpose behind that because quite frankly the armor 
if you know you you're doing the research, I'm sure you guys read it too. The armor was designed for like basically atmospheric conditions, yeah. like <laughs> breathing and shit like that. It wasn't never stopped meant to stop blaster bolts. Well, no, it can't stop blasters. Can't stop sticks that we learned in Rogue <laughs> One. So you mean do you you mean? Uh, Return of the Jedi. No, I'm talking about Chirrut from oh. Rogue One, where he just beat the shit out of that whole squad of stormtroopers with his. Well, uh, his if I put stick. a helmet on you and hit you pretty hard with a stick, I mean you're going <laughs> to you know, drop. You know, it's... you know, guys in knights in armor that got hit with maces still had broken ribs at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, it still uh, hurts. Yeah, let's just. We don't. We don't need to trash Rogue One. I'd rather go to. Return I'm not of the trashing Jedi. it. I'm I'd, tra- ra- I'd rather go to Return of Jedi, whether they're fucking hitting them with like little three foot tall fucking <laughs> teddy bears, or fucking hitting them with with fucking you know stones. Let me, let me just not even rocks, stones and I, fucking sticks. Can I just get something out there about Return of the Jedi and it's stormtrooper centric? Can you well, imagine? Yeah, it, it, it is. <laughs> don't worry. Can you imagine being a veteran stormtrooper of the Endor campaign? Like, basically, your version of PTSD is sitting in a corner, rocking back and forth, going, yub, 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 yub. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime your child brings his teddy bear out, you fucking freak the hell out. Like, like I'm sure there's PTSD for the Hoth and, you know, oh things with God. snow, but Endor, man. Imagine how screwed up, because... Just, you have to understand, like, what you see in the movie with Endor is one thing, but when you read, like, Aftermath and then some of the other books that talk about the guys that survived the Death Star blowing yeah. up and got stuck on Endor for months, well, they fought a guerrilla campaign. We're gonna, we're gonna see a whole, you know, we're gonna get to see that in Battlefront 2 when it comes out yeah, the game. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the perspective. It's this elite soldier group that was there on the planet sitting, sitting there watching the Death Star blow up, and we're gonna get to see that. So we're gonna get to see that perspective. And, so they and not only is it a guerrilla campaign, it's a guerrilla campaign with a bunch of three foot tall freaking bears. <laughs> yeah. Like and you know what's funny if you read the 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 legend stuff, that's where the stormtroopers in the minds of the people of and, and I actually think they do carry it over into the aftermath canon books. After Endor, sort of the um the face and the facade of the stormtroopers as being this tactically elite and effective unit. No. It disintegrates. Yeah. As, and and Endor is where they lo- basically lose that reputation. Yeah, they, yeah. They, it's, that's a good point. They emphasize that in the Aftermath books yep. because there's things going on like in Coruscant yep. that the Stormtroopers are just seen as fucking uh, it, it, like some overworked beat cop. Yep. You know, they're in uniform, they're fucking walking around, and they're just like, uh, you know, this is this even is even the stormtroopers themselves like lose their morale because you'll that's that's what I'm yeah, talking about. Like yeah. you can just tell that like they're they're not. Yeah, they're not taking it seriously. It is. It's it's like a really like defeated enlisted force that you're just like, yeah, yeah. fuck it, I'm stuck in this. But one of the reasons that you have all these um, these rebellions on all these planets right after the blo- the uh, the Endor campaign is because people go, you know what, you're not that scary, and then they they rise up, you know, because yeah. they've shown they can be beaten. Which which makes a point where like, well, what are people really scared of? How about giant fucking planet killing things? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to do yep, that yep, again. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna need to do that. <laughs> but but this time, no exhaust ports. No, we're, gonna no. figure, we're gonna figure <laughs> no. a way to get. No. <laughs> we're gonna have oscillators. <laughs> God, why? I don't. I don't. Like... <laughs> Anybody that knows anything about electronics and like hears those words? And the way they're the context they're putting it into, I'm just like, you're you're fucking kidding me, right? Well, like, I, this is this is what we're hanging our hats on. Next here. time, we're not going to go and recruit a guy who escaped from us the first time to build this damn thing. <laughs> yeah, and, and this of course goes back to what was brought up on uh, Project VCR the first time we reviewed a Star Wars movie. It's all fantasy, right? It's That's not right. science fiction; Star it's Wars fantasy. Physics. So you yeah. you kind of have right. to think about it in that perspective. Anyway, uh, uh, Stormtroopers. Yeah, getting back to the clones real quick Star before Trooper. we actually transmit... Stormtrooper? Stormtrooper. Stormtrooper. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself! No. <laughs> <Aww. laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, going back to the clones, one thing that I found... Uh, I don't know if I found it interesting, but it was... Yeah, it was kind of par for the course for George Lucas was the fact that there were about 20 different variants of clone troopers throughout the course of the movies and the the Clone Wars series. Well, if you read up on if if you read about how they were trained, there were there were specialized clones. So oh, sure. They, they they were 
trained to do f- fill certain roles in the army. Right, but it's awfully convenient that they all had different color and types of armor, which oh also appeared on different toys that they were selling right. throughout the course doesn't, of those doesn't years. The military have different patches and insignias for different units. All right, calm down. All right. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're thinking this is a marketing campaign. It's a lot more innocent than that, yeah. Jason. It's not like the guy. It's not like the only form of payment the guy took for his first movie was to retain all marketing rights. <laughs> and, yeah, and you know what? I I admire the brilliance of George Lucas to do things like that. And that wasn't brilliance. It wasn't. No. Wow. No. My theory's always been it was the one thing he knew he could probably get out of them for payment. Because if he walked in there and was like, I want half, they would have been like, <laughs> go fuck yourself. Eddie, so I like, want half, hey, Eddie. Let me take, <laughs> let me, I want half, Eddie. Let me take <laughs> all the marketing rights to a movie that you don't even know will be successful. <laughs> go ahead, because if it bombs, you can't make anything anyway. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, people So you're always, saying it's dumb luck? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. But here's the other thing I will say. Sometimes it's better to just step in shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I, I did notice that because I, I mentioned before when we were talking about the Clone Wars in the last episode, my son was about seven years old at that time, and I ended up buying him a whole bunch of different clone trooper toys, and I must have bought him at least ten different kinds because they all had different fucking colored stripes in their armor or different design of the armor, all for different roles. Well, let's, and- let's face it, too. In Battlefront 2, the original Battlefront 2, mm-hmm. um, the better of the battle, original Battlefront games. Yeah. Like, you're cycling through all those different, you know, clone troopers. Like, sure. all their different specialties and everything else. Yeah. So, it's, I don't know. I don't I don't fault them for it at all. You know, he, Bob brings up a good point. You know, we do have, now, necessarily, we especially the past, I don't know, 10 years we've been in the military where we've had those goofy uniform changes where it's yeah. like, mm-hmm. oh, the Navy guys are going to wear this dumb outfit. The Marines are going to have a different outfit. The Army's going to have a different outfit. We're, we're going to have our dumb outfit. Who remembers Digicam? We, we, we wear Digicam every you still, day. You're still wearing yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's oh, fucking I thought awful. they did away with that. Uh, well, the so, certain services did and moved to something that was more effective. But what ends up happening is... But like you guys the, can dodge radar with that. What? Radar. <laughs> <laughs> I've read it. Until you wash it. <laughs> as soon as... Like, I, I remember the first time I deployed in, in some, some of those uniforms, is it was like, you can't... No starch. And you can't wash these things with fucking any kind of like it was. It was all these restrictions in the material. Now the material probably had some properties that they were advertising, but yeah, as soon as you actually made it like a wearable item that you had to do every day, yeah, totally fuck. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, but there was like we went through uniform iterations, and you know different service components have different uniforms now, so it's not. He's not. We're we have to live it, so it probably doesn't make it as much of a difference to us. We just look at it as uniformity and marketing. Yeah. But he probably brings up a good point. Like there's, you know, if they're wearing red or they're blue or they're specialized different way or they're wearing wings or whatever, there's probably some some truth to that. Yeah, but I, I did like Remember institutional bias. Yes. I did like the evolution of the armor where in episode two, it started off as, as very Mandalorian like, right? It, mm-hmm. it was very close to like the Mandalorian armor where by episode three, it had evolved into this hybrid of a cross between that clone trooper armor and almost the stormtrooper armor. Holy shit. Do you realize that I just now, just now, when you said that, mm-hmm. Jango Fett, Mandalorian armor, mm-hmm. right? their ar- armor was similar. Yeah. I never made that connection no? until just this moment. Wow. I mean, if you read, if you read the legend, fucking... if you read the legend stuff about the Mandalorians, I mean, so the worst, one of the worst defeats the old Republic ever had handed to him was by a Mandalorian army that was, that, that was under strength. Oh, just well, beat the snot out of his. I just, strength. I just never made the, like the physical, like looking at a, a, a cl- I'm like looking at a clone helmet and going, yeah. yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, you look yeah. at the, you look at those clone helmets Son from episode bitch. two, and they're very similar. Not not exact, but they're right. very similar well, they to the, the Mandalorian t- armor. Yeah, yeah. it's and that's it, fucking. Oh, yeah, wow, and, that was weird. Yeah, and it evolves in episode three. It's like a hybrid of stormtrooper helmets and yeah. and yeah. those Mandalorian it's helmets. Fucking, yeah, maybe it was the epiphany I had because of this uh this innocent gun bourbon aged dark ale, <laughs> who's not sponsoring us, but. Definitely. Should we should yeah. get some sponsors. We should be. Fucking yeah. hell, man. Yeah. yeah, we could do some heavy duty drinking on this thing if we had some more sponsors. I know. Are there any Star Wars branded alcohols? It, like the internet exists, so it probably exists. Yeah, yeah. No, it's tough. There's you know, if they got locked down on marketing, you know, and licensing and shit like that, it might be tough to get. Mm. Mm-hmm. 
It's tough. We'll have okay. to do some research. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> anyway, yeah, well, for and for for the listeners today, like I, we should have said in the beginning, this is definitely like this. These research topics for different stuff, like for the stormtrooper things, like it's all super interesting. And I highly encourage you go in there and get into different stuff. Like Bob's Bob's been talking about a lot of expanding universe stuff and legend stuff. There's there's so much good oh, things, yeah. like especially the stuff with the Mandos mm-hmm. and you know, all that all that backstory with them. That there's you know, insert shameless plug here. If I was getting money back from you know the publisher to expand the universe stuff, I mean, it's totally worth reading because it's so yeah. good, so mm-hmm. good. I mean, and as we said, as I've said before, it doesn't mean that none of that stuff gets reused and recycled. So it's, it's true. not like you're not. It's not like oh, I'm going to read this and it's never going to go anywhere. Oh, like, and they're bringing more Mandalorians into the into mm-hmm. the storyline anyway. You know, they did it in Rebels. Yeah. You know, so it's not impossible for well, they, Mandalorians they've... to show up back in our in our universe. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I just. You know, it is. I felt like there was a, there was a point it, a few minutes ago. Where I'm like, wow, we've just been talking about really nerdy stuff. <laughs> like, all right, we got to bring the funny right now. Let's do yeah. it. Uh, say fart. Somebody do something. No, uh, make fun of Jason right now. Go. So, so the stormtroopers. Why me again? The, the stormtroopers. Um, well, the clone troopers go through version one. Version two comes out right after the Battle of Yavin, basically, or mm-hmm. right around then. It's when this, the Arcanian process guys get slotted in, and then sort of right around. Endor, I think, if my memory serves me right, is when a lot of the humans start get, well, not Endor, uh, or rather right around, um, right around sort of Yavin, rather, is when they start right. changing over and they start slotting humans in and, and stuff sort of starts to go downhill. And that, that would make sense, you know, because those new stormtroopers can't hit shit. Nope. Yeah, for, and, with, with their blasters. So. And there's there's definitely we could be doing the disservice to talking about stormtroopers and effectiveness if we weren't telling about some of the theories out there about like were they deliberately made in, ineffective because of like trying to make sure like hey if you're if you're standing out there shooting at these guys like the emperor needs it to go to a certain point or some certain things that are happening so in an effort to again be the puppet master for all these things that are going on throughout the force and these things like okay you know what these guys aren't going to do as well over here because we're we're seeing as proven by things like rebels and clone wars and stuff like that that there's other things happening in the star wars universe that yeah. you know we're seeing our 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 newsreel type footage of the movies as canon, but right. there's other things that are going on. So we can only assume that the ineffectiveness of the stormtroopers is universal. Right. That may not necessarily be the case. You now you could have these elite units that are going to show up in, in battlefront. Um, you know, that elite unit, they might be, okay, we're going to train these troopers. Uh, Krennic had his group of death troopers. Yes. You know, yes. There's, so there may still be room for like, okay, we're allowing like the, the bullet catchers, for lack of a better term, are going to go out there and they're going to do their thing. But I, there's still elite units out there doing things. So, but I know that there's there's speculation out there. For, uh, I've read it out on the internet's about uh, things like or or they were deliberately missing because they needed Han Solo to go do this thing because the Emperor needed that to happen in order to entice Luke to get further close or get closer to the dark side, you know. And it was just kind of him playing out this play, which. Um, Ian, what's uh, Palpatine's? McDermott. Ian, Ian McDermott. McDermott. Yeah. He, and, and even most recently in the celebration, talks about the, the character of the Emperor and like how important the play aspect of all this is. They allude to an afterlife oh, as yeah. well. Oh, yeah. Whereas it's like, okay, this is, we're, we're playing out this scene. And this is, everything is, how, when he foresees how the scene plays out, it's almost to music. Like oh, here's yeah. this opera and mm-hmm. here's this music and how this how a lot of stuff plays out like that could very well be have been a part of it you know the emperor you spoke about it in the last uh that, you know, episode you were on it was his force ability may very well be or maybe Jason no Bob no, mentioned it, that right yeah no no if it's it was a good, if it's a good idea can't right, it was a week ago so I can't really remember <laughs> yeah so you know, it, it one of those things are okay. The stormtroopers and even our Arcanian process and its effectiveness and okay, yeah, this all makes sense from a strategic level. Like, yeah, we need troops to be able to come out faster. But you know, does he? Is there something that well, he's to, doing that, to, to make sure it thumbs it down? That, that technically, and again, you could do a whole episode on this, so I won't go too far into it. But you have to remember that the Clone Wars, the the independent republics or the independent systems alliance or whatever they're called, the Trade Republic, like <clears throat> that was all started by. Palpatine, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, he's playing both sides of the whole yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. He I mean, was the so, leader of both yeah, armies, so essentially. He, he knows where he has to lose and where he has to win yep. and get to his end result. You know, 
and <clears throat> sort of trying to get back on track. Not that it'll last very long. Yeah. <laughs> you you see the jump from clone trooper to stormtrooper. Um, right about Order sixty six. Right after Order sixty six is when when you re, when when basically right after Order sixty six and the announcement of a Galactic Empire, the very first stormtroopers come out, and it's not all of the army. It's an right. actual unit, and then it just start. They just start to sort of spread it out. Okay. Well, and that's you know what some of my favorite you know pictures of recruiting posters for the Empire. You know, <laughs> you know uh, some of the stuff stuff like that. Yeah, you know, the Empire needs you. Yeah, yeah, you know, Darth Vader pointing at you, like you know, Uncle Sam style. And, yeah, you know, some other really good ones that I enjoy, like World War II style <laughs> recruitment posters. You can imagine things like that going up at the Outer Rim, like, hey, you know, we're here to make sure we're here to you know have peace in uh in in the galaxy, so you can come on board and help fight this, mm-hmm. and you know, potentially. Uh, one of the things I've been self critiquing is we probably shouldn't talk about what we're going to do in another episode so much. So I'm going, I'm not, I'm just going to say this the one time. <laughs> we should probably do an episode that talks about like the academy, like the air quote academy that right. allegedly Han Solo attended that, you know, that Luke was going to put his application that Luke to. Luke wanted his application to like where, like, what is this academy? Like, so is it where a recruit could go and join the empire and learn how to do these things? And then you had, X-wing pilots and things like that that defected out of that, mm. you know, to go and, and do things for the rebellion. So there's a whole other subsect of that that we can talk about. With when you're talking about the enlisted stormtrooper, or the enlisted troop, you know, the people that d- decided against it, like, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna serve there. I'm gonna go, you know, serve with the other guy. Well, funny so. enough about the academy, some of the very first instructors at the official Imperial Academy were decommissioned clone troopers. So like four years uh. before Yavin. Uh, happens. They start, most of the troopers are decommissioned and the guys that are left basically become training sergeants or whatever at, at the academy. Yeah. That makes sense. Officers. Yeah, and of course they had to decommission them because of the accelerated growth. Yeah, they start getting right? old. Yeah, because you know? they got old very, very quickly. Yeah. Well, and even if, you know, I've watched some of the Rebels series where they actually they encounter some uh, former, I, I don't think it's Rex, I think it's some other right. um, some other clones that they run into out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And, and uh, you see them, you see them as very, a lot older, you yeah. know? Yeah. And that, that kind of reminds me that some of these clones oh. actually did end up yeah, having, Rex. having names like Rex and well, they gave they're... themselves names. Um, like I'm just reading Wikipedia now, like Torrent is the TX828 was a guy who was a, uh, one of the, one of the, uh, who was still serving as a stormtrooper around the time of the battle of Yavin Nearly age forty due to his accelerated growth process, strands yeah. of gray hair, blah blah blah. So, so yeah, it's it's interesting that uh, some of the clones did become or were bred to be more independent to have. Well, they were names all they, and... they were all bred to think independently. That was a part of the process. So they they were bred to have independent thinking in order to make them more effective. Right, fighters. but they also wanted them to be more susceptible to orders right. and things right. like that. There's so a... think think Navy SEALs. Yeah, you yeah. want you have a you have a fiercely independent. You know they they want you to be they're, you're the smartest guy, and doesn't matter what rank you are, you need to be able to lead the entire group. Sure, you, know, you need to have that. Be, you need to be able to think at that level. You know, you need to be able to think at, operationally and take orders, and, but you also need to be at you know more strategic level to be able to make decisions. So they bred that into all these guys. Like, hey, we need you to be you, you're we're breeding you out of this guy because he was really smart and was able to think on his feet. So we need to be able to incorporate that into something else, mm. you know, as opposed to just breeding mindless b- bullet catchers. Right. You right. Know, they all had they all had some level of I mean, of you know ability to think outside them. Also, remember right. that Order sixty six was triggered by a chip too. So right. All these guys were chipped. Yep. So the, that was sort of the the uh, the safety net for Palpatine, if you will, you right. know, about them thinking independently is you still have a chip stuck in there. Right. And that, and that, and that's, you know, proven in canon because it was, it was in a rebels episode, you know, specifically they do where the they talked about that. the same thing in Aftermath that. too, actually. Yeah. Hmm. So, um, but then once they become stormtroopers, then, then you get like, you know, again, a whole different, there's a bunch of different stormtroopers out there. I mean, we could go on all the, <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, there's, 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 there's yeah. Of well, of course, I think our first exposure to uh, non-traditional stormtroopers was with uh, the snowtroopers in Empire Strikes right. Back or yeah. whatever the hell they're called. I think you had the official name. Yeah, 
it was uh, the cold weather assault trooper. Right. So it's yeah. very, it's very military sound. <laughs> I, I, I can picture that. Yeah. Uh, when I go to, you know, procure my cold weather attack trooper gear, mm-hmm. you know, national stock number 0052, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I mean, technically, if you're, if you're going chronologically, your first appearance to stormtroopers is obviously in, in Rogue One. Oh, first yeah. First non usual right. one. I think would so Vader had his own regiment and I forget what they were that were supposedly loyal to him. Right. So those guys at the end that are they're basically Vader stormtroopers. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, but, and, but then we had Krennic death yeah, troopers. Oh, yeah, too. yeah, Krennic death, death troopers, death, death like troops, chronologically, yeah. yeah. And the guys I think on Camino are equipped a bit differently because they're they're island-ish troopers. They've got they've got something different. I forget what it is, but anyway. Yeah. So, but it's interesting too, like when we're talking about just the straight, straight up, you know, Battle of Yavin and, and after that Stormtrooper, you know, it's very much, you can imagine it being just a regular enlisted force. Yeah. yeah. Like, and I think that's when, when we watch it, Jason and I watch these movies, it's funny, you can pick up on some of the nuances, like, uh, in A New Hope when they're, uh, Obi-Wan's, uh, taking down the, uh, the generator. The generator. Yeah. You know, um, the, the, uh, tractor beam. Yeah. And, uh, you hear the two stormtroopers just talking about, you know, you hear about the T-16s, blah, 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 mm-hmm. you know, just having a little bit of banter. It, it humanizes them. Sure. Cause you they know, are it, human guys. Yeah. At this point. And it, it's the beginning, like in the beginning of our Star Wars knowledge, this is, this is what they are, you know, and then we kind of go back to the clones and things like that. But, you know, realistically, this is, it's just a couple of army guys. It's just a, you know, a couple of guys are standing guard, not necessarily like there's no fucking way. That there's a bunch of teenagers that are coming come in, come in and fucking, or, or some old bastard's gonna fucking be swinging around behind us, you know, shutting this thing off. There's, yeah. there, why would I need to be on guard? I'm in the fucking Death Star for yeah. God's sakes, you know? By, um, by the way, just to correct something, the phase two troopers came in around the Battle of Mon Cala because that was still Clone Wars time. And then the, okay. the stormtroopers are about four years before you have Yeah, before, so, so any, my bad about that. Listen, any, any, anything timeline wise or if we miss something like for detail work, it's Bob's fault. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Totally Bob's fault. Probably. <laughs> so. I accept that. Yeah. but So that was the big th- takeaway for me. Like, especially when we're talking about stormtroopers, like the clone troopers were like elite, specially bred. You know, there was, you know, if we had the 1.5 million of them, but those were like elite troopers that were meant to not necessarily need the numbers. Right. And be able to perform duties. Right. Like, because again, they were trained. Broad spectrum. Yeah. They were trained from birth to be soldiers. Right. Which is why they were probably far more effective than your episode four era stormtroopers. Yeah. Who, some enlisted schmuck who's out there, you know, gets some, uh, get some basic weapons training and here's, here's some armor that doesn't protect you from anything and go yeah. out there and fucking beat and, somebody. And you mentioned it, you know, that you're, you're in the middle of the Death Star. Star, right you're you're assigned to the death star nothing's going on right you every fucking day you just go you man your post ain't shit yep. going you on bring your daughter to work yeah you know <laughs> and then and then you play, you play with the mouse droid every that's time right it comes by. yeah you, you get it so into your routine and then fucking one day all of a sudden some shit goes down the old man sneaks in and the fucking teenagers are there to blow it up yep. and you're like oh fuck what the hell's going on i have to use this this blaster yeah. oh shit let's, I'll, I'll, let's, let's try all, to hit something let's all dogpile into this one opening and just yeah. fill it with our dead bodies yeah <laughs> So it, it, it do you, sort of. Do you hear what happened today? What they got some old beat up piece of shit Corellian freighter with some smuggler who's got a price on his head, an old dude and a teenager. Yeah. Oh, oh interesting. Yeah. yeah. Then you fucking managed to hit a couple of us over the head, go and and you yeah. know get the princess out of her fucking cell, and you know. So I mean that can kind of explain the incompetence and the the inability of the stormtroopers right. to actually do their job effectively. All right, but yeah. here's what it doesn't explain: First Order stormtroopers, who apparently still can't hit crap. Well, True. I don't, I don't know about that. What are they not hitting? Ray, Finn, Han Solo, Chewie. Keep going. <laughs> well, they're very effective when they're initially introduced in the in the village. Right. Oh yeah. They you they know. they gun down oh, those yeah, they gun those down unarmed those, those unarmed, unarmed, unarmed villagers. villagers. Well, why did you join the first order to travel to new and interesting places, yeah. meet exotic people, and get a college them. education <laughs> <laughs> and, and kill them? <laughs> well, that's a good segue. Let's you know. Can we move on to talk about the first order sure. stormtroopers? Since yeah. we're at this, at this point in the in our you know yeah, our you, timing. You you mean the Hitler Youth? <laughs> not not necessarily. Well, listen, there. I agree with that. There is a lot of – maybe not their, their Hitler youth, but there's a lot of allegory to that stuff when sure. you see them formed up and everything else. Sure. But, and just the banners hanging from shit, 
you know, the first order was deliberately being over the top and oh, like, yeah. their, their intention was to be that oppressive, like, you know. Well, you're talking about people who were, you know, as Finn says, taken from birth mm-hmm. and trained to be troopers. The difference is they're still natural born or we're to assume everything we know at this point says that they're natural born right. people from, but, um, they're, they're going through a, a training process, which is basically like brainwashing. Yeah. They're I mean, Marines. You know, so Arma, <laughs> mm-hmm. so, uh, the guy who trains them is a guy named Armitage Hux, who you see in the movie, his father, uh, whose first name eludes me at this point, but his father ran the Imperial breeding program, which was a program during the empire that basically said, if you guys, if, if two Imperial soldiers have a kid, we'll give you a bunch of tax breaks. And no. <laughs> it, there were good things would happen. They wanted the Empire, obviously, to have children. Humans, sure. by the way. Human children. Right. Not a lot of not a lot of aliens in the Empire, in case anybody hasn't noticed. Oh, no, and that's a theme that's been carried over from the old expanded oh, universe, yeah. where they, they explicitly said the Emperor did not like non-humans. No, non-humans right. and females. Right. He, were, well, what's, which, what makes the interaction with Thrawn that much more interesting. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And so anyway, Hux, that's, Hux's dad started there, then he ends up running the Academy, and then he gets rescued when yes. everybody has their, when the remnants of the Empire have their exodus during the Aftermath series. And what you're led to believe at the end of it is basically, spoiler alert, uh, you can turn it off now if you haven't read it. Okay. What you're led to believe is that they're eventually going to off Huck Sr. and Armitage is going to take over as his dad's successor once they figure out everything he knows. And it's really, really hit home at what the First Order troopers are going to be like because Armitage is, is made to be this sickly, sort of not very um, prowess-filled young kid. Yeah. But... He's an Ill- illegitimate child. Like yeah. every, he's, everyone's just kind of like dumping on him. Yeah, it's scoffed at him. Over he's the, he's the redheaded stepchild. Yeah, he is, <laughs> and, he, <laughs> yeah and he's very much redheaded. Yeah. And also, I well, but you know, he's well educated. Child. They do say he's been sent to the best schools. He's yeah. well educated, and he's put in a situation where he's got these kids from Jakku that have been basically brainwashed from birth to be loyal to um, Rax, and. They basically say, okay, you're in charge of them, and they'll do whatever you want them to do. And he orders them to, like, punch the shit out of one of the other kids, and they just do it. Yeah. And so that's what you're led to believe the new trooper training program yeah. is going to be, is brainwashing from birth. Yeah. yeah. Brendel Hux is the his yeah, father. And, oh, okay. And you see, like, he's he's a weak character as well, but they, like, Rax kept him along because he needed him because, you know... Rax is a product of Jakku, one of these children from Jakku. And there's a whole thing that you haven't gotten to yet. Yeah. So understand that uh, Armitage Hux and Brendel Hux and this, this all part of that, like, you know, Bob's alluding to that, like, Palpatine had a plan. Yep. You know, so, you know, Papa's got a plan. So, it, yeah. there, you know, go for Papa Palpatine. No, and he's <laughs> – so in that – with these children, like there was a lot of abducted children. Right. Like it wasn't, it was like orphans that, okay, we're taking all these orphans. It was uh, children that were abducted from, yep. like it was, it was a group of kids that started all this that all came from Jakku. Okay. And there's probably, there might be some interesting correlations with like Ray. with, with Ray and Jakku and that, that it, it opens up a little bit more, you know, a, a little bit oh, broader sure. thought. C- certainly tells you why all the craps on Jakku in the beginning of. Of that of episode, uh, well, of course, and, and you oh, know yeah, we had, could, yeah, we could make a whole episode about Jakku because you know the battle for Jakku was the last stand of the Empire. Yeah. Right. Ray was on Jakku. The map to Luke was on Jakku. The you know the the early yeah. Hitler youth were on Jakku. Yeah, so you're, you're going to get when you get to the third book and you get to that point, you'll see how like again Jakku is kind of the the pivot point where the where Yavin, you know Yavin four was the pivot point for. Uh, the original trilogy, yeah. you know, Jakku is the same right. for, for, you know, what we're going into with episode seven. So yeah. now, anyway, so, but the first order stormtrooper being trained from birth, birth and the, the orphans, 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 like orphans. It, 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 it went back to that. Like we need to, we need to have a fighting force that's specialized and trained for the entire time, as opposed to, you know, some 
fucking 16 year old, 17 year old enlisted guy that we're getting from the outer rim that just didn't have anything better to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like we have to, in order to be successful, we need to have the specialization. We need to have people that are f- fiercely loyal. Yeah. Now, one thing that they did with the stormtroopers for the first order and, and specifically in episode seven that I found very curious and I'm, I'm really curious where they're going with this or if they have a point to this at all is the humanizing of the stormtroopers because more than any other trooper in the past, they, they really have, uh, personalities, differences between them. One thing that they, that I made note of when we did the, the Force Awakens review on Project VCR was the fact when that opening scene, when they're all going down in that invasion force mm-hmm. onto Jakku is they, they had that shot of them in the shuttle where they're all different heights, you know, and yeah. they, they, they distinctively made that shot so you could see that they're different heights. When the one gets killed and he, he kind of sticks his hand on Finn's head and spreads the blood that, that really humanizes that guy where we've never seen that before in a stormtrooper, right? We've never seen a stormtrooper get shot and actually bleed and still be alive for a minute as he's like in the right. throes of death, you know, trying well, to. Well, I mean, what's interesting though, you say that, but, and you see it in the first five minutes of a new hope though. Do you? You do mm-hmm. because you see there's a stormtrooper as <laughs> Vader's coming through the doorway. There's a stormtrooper tending to another stormtrooper yeah. that's on the ground. Okay. Now it's not as visceral. Right. You don't have the blood and stuff like that, but there's definitely like, like, okay, this stormtrooper is leaning down to check on that stormtrooper. Okay. Now it could just be very well be like, okay, this is the beginning of the trilogy. So it's not like, um, right. You know, it's not where George, you know, we're not where we're, we're 40 years away from that now. Right. So when George did the movie, like, like you are just like the interaction as a regular enlisted guy, a normal enlisted troop would like, okay, here's a fallen brother. Let me tend to this. Sure. But I mean, their presentation to the audience was again, these are just faceless soldiers that are just getting blown away left and right. It doesn't really matter. They're not really people. Whereas, like, right from the get-go in Force Awakens, we get this image of this guy who's bleeding and he's, like, right. reaching for Finn. And From a storyline perspective, you have to, or Finn doesn't matter as much. Sure. Right. Frank, Finn, Frank, Finn doesn't exist. Frankly, you know, it's my that. hope that that is, in fact, true, but I will probably be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, maybe that was just all a vehicle to get Finn to kind of wake up and realize, I don't want to be part of this group. No, because I, I think they... They made an attempt in the story itself to say, okay, when when they're uh, bringing up, you know, what oh, fuck, what's his what's his call sign, um, his his service number, T R eight R or or you mean uh, Finns? Yeah, um, F N two one eight seven. That's right, F N two one eight seven. Right. So they bring his file up, and you see his little baby picture and spinning yeah. around, and like they're looking at it, it's like, oh, you know, we've never had a problem with him before, or but something like that, or he's been brought into a re- reintegration program. Yeah, that's not a singularity. Right. Like you have a reintegration program, yeah, that that's because that other issue. people yeah, have had that. issues with doing well, this, and you send them back through their brainwashing and be like, "All right, we're going to re." You know, in Air Force terms, like when we go to the academies, like we're being reblued, sure, you know, essentially. Sure. So it's you know, all right, let's make sure it sticks this time. So I think that's it's not something that's just for Finn. I think we're meant to believe that, and it's kind of backed up in the aftermath books yeah. that this is this fighting force while. They've been kind of brainwashed from birth, still has some independent thought. Sure. And they're, and it causes problems, you know, with, there's with having a, to be there's, there's still a ghost in the machine, if you will. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, even the, uh, the TR8R, the traitor guy, you know, he's. That whole thing was fucking made up, though. That's not, that wasn't, that wasn't his real call. No, I understand that, like, that. I'm just saying, I'm just speaking about that trooper as an example right. like he he gets emotionally involved when he sees Finn right he sees right. him he's like oh that's that motherfucker that betrayed us right. and he gets he gets emotional he has an actual human response that we don't see from stormtroopers that's true. that often so you and know so he, does Ren well yeah yeah but again the, the, Ren I understand but from a stormtrooper you don't normally see that they've yeah. never presented them in that light before so it's just again these first order stormtroopers seem like they're being presented a lot differently than True. what we've been given in past trilogies, yep. and that that'll that your thought process will be reinforced when you read Aftermath. Oh, yeah. Okay, when you get to that point. <laughs> yep. I guess I just need to fucking read these books before the next episodes yes. because it always seems to be going back to those. For Again, some Jason, reason. reading is fundamental. It is. It is, <laughs> and your vocabulary will improve. <laughs> Apparently, so. Ah. <laughs> uh, that's really all I had for notes for troopers. I mean, there's a whole bunch of. Different tangents we could get off on, well, but uh, yeah. we're look, look. This is this is one of those things where it's an interesting 
like research topic for sure, because there is stuff. I mean, the, the, there was part of the processing for the, the clones that the intermediary between the clones and having a different set of clones before you got to the enlisted stormtrooper. Um, you know, unfortunately I can't find a smoking gun that says, okay, just like I, t- I talked about earlier with what's the, you know, is, is what's happening? Like, are they being deliberately like made to not be able to shoot straight or whatever? Right. You know, can't answer that. There's nothing in the canon strictly that's going to, to lead us down that road where we can answer that question. We can only assume that, Hey, just because you got some, enlisted schmuck from the outer rim who might not necessarily be able to shoot straight. You got that guy out there, you know, engaging with people that have force abilities or have more specialized training or got just goddamn lucky like Han Mm. Solo. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Well, think about this too. The clone troopers go from a offensive force that's used to fight battles on specific locations and then move on from there once a victory is won to another location because they're going on worlds that they really don't have to pacify. They just have to get rid of the uh, the invading force because that world's already sort of in the fold by and large. Mm-hmm. Once you move to the Imper- the the Imperium and Imperial troopers, you're talking about occupying forces. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You need a lot more numbers, right. which means you need to recruit a lot more, which means your standards go down, which means uh, yep. you're you know, it's even conceivable that your one year training goes down to three month training just so you can keep pumping enough guys out to to occupy worlds for so, for sure, and I'll, I'll tell you what there's there's legend stuff or expanded universe stuff yeah. that definitely validates that. Yeah. Where yeah. you've got even with uh, when Luke's working with Mara Jade and a lot of those n- initial books, uh, they're they're actually in there trying to disrupt like the occupation and some of the the troop movements and stuff like that. They get really specific about, it and you can tell like, yeah, this is an occupying force. Well, if you this even, is not an invasion force. Even in aftermath, when they're on Kishik, do you look at the forces that are left there when it gets stranded? Kashik, Kashik, whatever. <laughs> and and like those guys aren't the cream of the crop. No, they they end up being described as like. Yeah. I mean, they go native after like what one week of not being able to get in touch with their star destroyers. Like yeah. they start turning on each other. Yeah. Well, that, not, that fucking not... that guy, that moth that was commanded them, no, was a, a complete moron. fucking just. But, but my absolute point is, psychopath. He, these are not people that have drunk the Kool Aid. These are human beings that enlisted and went. Yo, war's over. I'm stuck here. Yeah, and I'm going to get of ripped apart Wookies. by Wookies. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm out. Like, Wookies that this. are being controlled by fucking you know chips. By the way, spoiler alert. Yeah, read the okay. fucking books. God damn it, Jason. I just said, like, five minutes ago, I guess I have to read the books. So, I mean, I can't. What did you I'm, do last he's week? Looking, he's looking. I worked. He's looking at us just like like we're crazy people. <laughs> like, And there's, you know, again, probably should have a little caveat in the uh, show notes for this one about some spoilers. Yeah, yeah. Now. You think? <laughs> <laughs> it Look, we didn't say anything here that's going to ruin the book experience right. for you. It's just there's there's a couple of things that are like there's a couple of plot lines that we just gave you a little hint at. OK, um, but it's important to talk about for like when we're talking about the Stormtrooper stuff, especially. Yeah. But regarding the Stormtroopers or the, the history of the Troopers themselves, they've always been an integral part of the Star Wars universe going all the way back to the Republic into the the clone wars and then the the occupying forces of the empire where they go from here with the first order i don't know but it's it definitely seems like it's a different direction and i guess only time will tell at this point but it was an interesting discussion i know there was a lot we still left on the table but you know we can always revisit this at a later time or just have the rest of uh, the listeners discuss it on social media so Dave, you want to rattle off all that stuff when you're done yeah. texting? We are. Hey, there's important things happening at home. It's something about lost remotes. Uh, uh, that, you know, that, that's that, important as hell. That it is. is. <laughs> well, I don't want to tell this individual to use the X1 Xfinity app that you can do just from your phone. It'll work just fine. We're not going to go there. So um, on the Instagram, we are at all things Star Wars pod. And uh, on Twitter, we're at all things SW Pod. Uh, we're also on Facebook. We got our face pa- Facebook page up. Thanks to everybody for uh, for sharing that. Uh, I guess we're trying to simulcast all the content, you know, between Instagram and Twitter and, and Facebook. So um, hit us up any one of those ways, and uh, we're trying to really be diligent and, and be looking at this stuff at least a couple times a day, so we can you know see what's going on, see what your feedback is. Yep. And if you want to just straight up email us because you're not on IG or anything like that. Uh, you can email us at allthingsstarwarspod at gmail.com. All right. And if you want to get 
to us individually. I am at Darth Roskam on Twitter, and I'm being told I need an Instagram. Yeah, so, finally, please. Just uh, it, it was like this. I remember the early days of the Project VCR podcast where I had to like quite literally bombard you with like get the fuck on Twitter, yeah, type shit. This is this is. It, about getting you on Instagram now. Yeah, so that's what it comes down to. Yeah, we have an Instagram for the show, but I don't have a personal Instagram. Right. I'm at Philly Dave seventy five on Instagram. If you uh, uh you, you care to follow me, uh, Star Wars stuff is is on there frequently, but most of it's just what Instagram is meant for, and it's pictures of of silly shit yeah. like the moon or like the, what's going on in the creek across the street from my house. <laughs> uh, later today, there'll probably be baby birds. Um, you know, the moon pictures. Well, yeah, there's a lot of that. So nice. All right, Bob, you got anything? Uh, sure. You can, if you want to find me, you can send me a self-addressed envelope <laughs> to the following address. Should it be self-addressed and stamped? Or are you going to pay for the stamp? No, we're not. No, I'm cheap. We're not paying for the stamp. <laughs> right. Uh, so you can send that to. And uh, and I'll write you back. Uh, <laughs> but uh, if you're down near Medford, New Jersey, you should check out Gamers Vault. Um, that's a card, comic, and video game place that uh, that I help run. And um, you should come in because we have a lot of Star Wars crap there too. They do. Um, and, I gotta get over there. I haven't been over there yet. Yeah, you should come over. And then uh, if you want to find me on Facebook, um, you won't be able to because I'm private and I don't want any friends. I do not blame him. Yeah, fair enough. It can I, be, you know, you know what? My it's a blessing san- and a curse, dude. My, my, mostly san- a curse. My sanity is great because the things on my feed are like baby pictures from my friends and like or my friends' kids and like. You, you mean know. what Facebook was meant for? Yeah, uh, pretty much. And anytime, you mean- anytime somebody becomes totally unbearable, it's great. It's just like TV. If you don't like it, you change the channel. You yeah. unfollow, and then it's, it's uh, amazing. And then my Facebook goes back to being copacetic. It's great. Yeah. It's amazing how that works. I know. It's awesome. But if some of that shit is entertaining. I will yeah. admit. Yeah. I mean, I guess it depends on what kind of shit you're talking about. When well, it's somebody trying to convince me of their political point of view, no, fucking shut up. <laughs> the, the thing that you're posting right now is not going to make a bit of difference. I don't care what side you support. If you forward a a political post, no one cares. <laughs> no one cares. What Stop I, it. But what I want you to do is I want you to go on the All Things Star Wars podcast Facebook page and interact with us because this is where we escape from that reality we, yes we come here to star wars and we talk about what's important and it's about what's coming up in star wars it's talking about the 40th anniversary Fuck yeah and what we're doing for that and then so, it, makes, it makes me happy so you're telling me if i were to send you a post telling you that frankly as far as i'm concerned i mean the empire had a lot of good points you just needed different leadership and and the galaxy would have been much better off rather than fracturing back into a very weak republic that's you, that's you'd, fine. I, you'd, have yeah. issue, you'd have issue with that. You, know, you no, care. That, I, you know, Fox Hollandette would be uh, would be broadcasting it. That's perfectly fine. It's, yeah. it's Star Wars related. 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 Frankly, how are you? How do you get anything done with a republic? I mean, you, just, you don't. Yeah, and in fact, finish the bloodline. Yeah, really finish, good. finish reading, Bob. Uh, finish reading the book, I'm Bob. So, I'm sorry, and... Jason. I had to get through the other three books I read in the last two weeks. I apologize. Yeah, but no, they they specifically address that in Bloodline, just the the ineffectiveness of the New Republic. Yeah, it's it's pretty good actually. Well, hopefully read the that, books. They're hopefully, very when good. the first Empire is victorious, that'll all be rectified. And we, we, you know, because I'm sure Hux seems like a fairly even keeled individual and supreme leader snoke you don't get to be a supreme leader unless you've got some really good ideas about yeah think of all the supreme leaders in the you know that we know and love and it's always worked out listen yeah. guy's always. gonna make the transports run on time dave all right that's what he's gonna do <laughs> he's gonna clean up coruscant uh, and yeah <laughs> anyway he's gonna, he's gonna enforce the laws that are already on the book dave no new uh, laws. We're just going to enforce the We're back to where we started. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good wraparound, though. Yeah, so, all right. Well, with that, guys, uh, Bob, thanks so much for coming on. And uh, Dave, thank you again. May the force be with you. May the force be with you. Cold 45. It's a dynamite taste. It's a grin. It's a groove. It's a blast. Cold 45. It's a dynamite taste. It's a win. It's a definite blast. Cold 45. Williams talks about Colt 45. There are two rules to remember if you want to have a good time. Rule number one, never run out of Colt 45. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. You want to know why you should keep plenty of Colt 45 on hand? 
You never know when friends might show up. I don't claim you can have a better time with Colt 45 than without it. But why take chances? The power of Colt 45. It works every time.